Communications has become a way of life for busy Americans. Texting, video sharing, social media. We live our lives on the information highway. But all too often, the information highway just can't handle all that traffic. Sporting events, concerts, and disasters can all cause commercial carrier networks to be overwhelmed with too many users trying to get down too few lanes at once. The results can be much more than a temporary inconvenience. Lack of communications can seriously impact public safety's ability to do its job. Chief Mike Reagan knows this reality all too well. We actually use several law enforcement agencies to provide uh, our security at the football games. With over 100,000 fans attempting to send texts and videos at one time, public safety's data communications can't get through using those same commercial networks when you have a, a game at Texas A&M University where you have 110,000 people that are all using uh, Twitter and Facebook and their iPhones and all of that, that shuts down the public carriers. So in the stadium, it's pretty awful. Trying to send a text or receive is iffy and then calling is pretty much a no. If you try and send a picture, it doesn't go through, at least for like a couple of hours or even after the game. It's very frustrating. When you're really designing a network that's based on optimization of costs and you have events that are infrequent, the problem is you can't really build a network large enough and fast enough to be able to support that. For example, if you look at Kyle Field, we've added close to 100 additional cell sites to the stadium. But when you still take additional 100 cell sites in the stadium and divide that by 100,000 people, you still have 1,000 people on every cell site. And that, again, is heavy traffic for any system. But a solution to this growing problem is on the horizon. And Texas A&M University's Kyle Field is one of the first stadiums in the U.S. to have it. It is public safety broadband, a wireless data network devoted specifically to the needs of public safety. We are on our own network privately. Uh, so that way we have the ability to push more data and more video, more bandwidth without it tunneling through and, and catching that bottleneck with all the, the rest of the public. By having access to a dedicated broadband public safety network, officers can share images and stream video during large-scale events without competing with commercial users. This is transforming the way public safety operates. Traditionally, voice communication and law enforcement is to give a description. For instance, if we have a lost child at Kyle Field, uh, generally we'll come out that it's an eight-year-old boy wearing a maroon shirt, which doesn't really narrow it down. Uh, they may give, be able to give the hair color and the height. When every second counts, public safety broadband can make all the difference. The advantage with broadband that a photo being provided to us by a family member gets it out to where we can enhance not only the clothing, the hair color, the height, but also a picture of the person that we're looking for. The nationwide public safety broadband network will eventually make the type of system that Texas A&M has today a reality across the U.S. Public safety agencies need to start looking at this because of the amount of data that software uses now, that video systems use now, to be able to take crime scene pictures, videos, biometrics, automatic license plate readers, facial recognition. All of these technologies need the additional bandwidth that this would provide us to be able to function in the field. LTE technology will be a force multiplier, make no mistake about it. We're improving situational awareness, real-time communications during emergency scenarios, ultimately helping save lives and protect our communities from all threats. Congress has already set a plan in motion. To learn more, visit firstnet.gov or txlte.com. <laughs>